Okay, so having fixed the instrument, I wanted to take some time to do a quick recap of what I've learned from this and to describe what the problem actually was. So, this was the problem. It's a, a TLO72, it's a dual JFET op amp, uh, low noise, high impedance inputs. Um, and now there's a bunch of these in this instrument, but the one that had failed was actually for, it's over here. That's for the keyboard control voltages for voice 2. Specifically for one for the tuning coefficient. So the pr if you recall the problem was that the instrument would not auto-tune voice 2. So I've actually put the bad component back in so that I can show you what it sounds like. So here is voice 1. Voice 2, which is the bad one. So you can hear that sharp. It's about a semitone sharp. Here voice 3. And voice four. So all the other voices sound good, except for that second one. <coughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to show you what uh, the purpose of that that I see what it was for. What it has to do with is the fact that all of the the control voltages in this instrument are all time division multiplexed. So I'm going to show you on the oscilloscope what uh, what each of those looks like, and you can see why it's so important. Okay, so I'm going to explain what you're seeing here because it's actually really cool. Uh, I've got the oscilloscope. It's connected to the output of... Uh, it's actually A50, I think it is, which is one of the... It's one of the demultiplexer ICs. So, this signal that looks like a bar graph, each one of these peaks is actually one of the, the control voltages. Uh, what's particularly interesting is this little section here. So those are four of the control voltages for the pitch. So I'm going to hit the very, very bottom key. This is uh, C0 and watch what happens. So that little peak that disappeared there is gone. Is, uh, creates the voice of Snow Watch. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to step through each of the octaves. So. That's C0, uh, that's on voice 4. I'm actually going to hit it again to show you C0 on voice 1. So that's voice 1. Here's voice 2. See the little peak that pops up there? Of course, it sounds horribly out of tune. Uh, this is C3 on voice 3. And C4 on voice 4. So you see this nice little uh, series of peaks there that correspond with C0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there's other spots on here. If I watch, if I vary the the pots for... This one is actually for the frequency of VCO1. So you can see that one's um, jumping around a, a fair amount. Now I suspect the reason why that's happening is because it's uh, uh, for all eight voices, perhaps. There's another pot I'll vary here. I uh, can't really seem to see the effect of this one at all. That was uh, pulse width, I guess. Here's the frequency of VCO2. So you can see in here, that's moving around. I'll try some of the other ones. Here's one for the, the frequency of the voltage controlled filter. Now you see it's dancing around up here. But, I mean, the basic idea is that every single analog control on this instrument has a a control voltage that shows up in here in the in, it's all time division multiplexed. So this really serves to illustrate the importance of the sample and hold circuits because their function is to to grab hold of one of those little tiny snapshots and hold that voltage solid so that rather than a little pulse 
each of the, the signals that requires a control voltage has a nice steady, uh, basically a, a DC voltage effectively. So again, so that's uh, that's what the time division multiplexed output from the, the D to A converter looks like. And that's the signal that is being fed to the multiplexers, or the demultiplexers, and in turn to each of the sample and hold circuits. So now I'm going to show you real quickly on the schematic where the oscilloscope probe was. So I was looking at this pin here, which is, it's marked as analog out is the signal. That's the, uh, the output from the, the DAC. That comes into pin 3 on this demultiplexer. And there's a set of digital inputs on here. One of these is for an enable, and it's an active low signal. And the others are for selecting, at any given time, you have three select pins. And so that allows you to select one of eight of these outputs. So those, in combination with this enable, when you assert this enable signal, which is active low, so you put a, a low, a logic low on that line, that's actually going to enable whatever comes in here to go out to one of those. So, now, the IC that had the issues here was with K, uh, key CV2. So that's this part here of the circuit. And it was this A60 here. You can see that there's two op amps. So the signal comes in here from KCV2. Um, and it is actually from A47 over here. Let's rotate the camera a bit. So you can see, same, again, the output from the DAC comes into A47. We've got the same sig uh, signals to select which output it's going to go to and whether it is sent to an output with this enable. We have KCV2 comes out of uh, pin 14 on A47, and that goes into here, which is the input to the sample and hold. Uh, now the other thing is you see there's a, a 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor here across the input, and that's actually what uh, is storing that voltage when it takes a little snapshot. Um, so this samples it, buffers it at the same time, sends it into the uh, to A61, which is that transconductance amplifier, and then the output of that is then buffered and sent to this pin here, which uh, that eventually makes its way over to one of the voice cards and provides the KCV2 signal. And that again is uh, that's the tuning coefficient. So if this, uh, in this case, there's something wrong with this IC, that tuning coefficient is going to be off, and that voice will never, never be able to be tuned properly, which is what we see. Uh, so next, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the replacement IC in, and you'll see the effect of that. Before I actually replace it, though, I'll point out where on the control board it is. So this this IC here is is IC60, and it's marked. There's a uh, they didn't actually silk screen the board. It's actually in copper on this one, but it just shows a number 60 there. So there's 60 and 61 beside it, and those are the two ICs for the sample and hold. Beside it are an identical pair, and those are the ones for voice 6. So this is voice 2 here. So I'm going to replace this one here, which is that faulty TLO72. So I've replaced the failed component. That's uh, this IC here. And this will switch back on. I'm actually going to turn off the lights here so you can see what it looks like when the auto-tune button is hit. So, now I'm going to press the auto-tune button in the front panel. See what happens? Step 3 is for each voice. And what happens is, anytime that a particular voice is triggered, the LED comes on. So you can see the same thing happens when it's tuning. And now when I play a voice... <laughs> The LED on voice uh, four lights up. Voice one, voice two. Notice that it sounds proper now because it's tuned properly. And voice three. If I play a chord, you can see all four of them light up.